everyone, Blake here. And today we are going to get into two different videos about Unity Machine Learning Agents 0.3. Spent some time over the weekend getting everything up and running, imported over, and it looks like I'm pretty happy with where things are. So there's going to be two videos. One is how to train in Unity Machine Learning Agents 3 because it's really different. And then the other video is how to port your project over from point 0.2 to point 0.3. So getting into training. So we're assuming at this point you have already ported a project from 0.2 to 0.3 or you've authored a new project in 0.3 or you've downloaded one from GitHub. Whatever it is, you have your 0.3 project. In this case, we're using our very, very basic Unity machine learning hello world example, right? We have a white marker and a red target and the whole objective of this game is to get the white marker onto the red target and you want to do that for as long as possible. You can only go up and down. That's all there is to this problem. The reason why we have a simple problem like that in our tool bag is because when there is a major uh, platform shift from 0.2 to 0.3 it makes a very good starting point so that we can go in, test things out with a simple project, make sure everything's running right, and then you know build up and, and maybe convert some of our more complex projects because there are certainly a number of gotchas in the 0.2 to 0.3 upgrade. So again, in this case we're just going to focus on training and all of the differences there are in training those models, but there are quite a number of differences. So first, as you saw, I was in player mode, so as I press the up and down key, the marker goes up and down, and that's all there is to it. So I am going to move this from the player mode to the external brain, which we're going to use for training. One of the things we want to keep in mind while we do this, the game object that has the brain, this brain script on it, this is generic, it's called a generic brain. That name of that game object actually becomes important. When we did training previously, you could only have one brain per scene, and so there was only one set of hyperparameters, and they only applied to that one brain because uh, there weren't any other options. Now, since you can have multiple brains in the scene, there is a new way to do configuration for doing your training runs, and so you need to be able to identify which brain is which. And so they use the game object for that, and I really don't want to change the name of that, even by accident. There we go. So here is our generic brain. It's the same one that we've been using. And so we're going to go ahead and do what you would expect, and we're going to go ahead and build this puppy. And we're going to make sure that it's the current open scene is the one that we're building. Again, PC standalone we're going to build. And in this case, I have a folder, uh, ML Agents 03. And in this folder, this is my Unity project, and then this Python folder, this is where all of the TensorFlow Unity ML uh, machine learning portion of the code is. So this is where I go ahead and uh, build my output to. And yes, I'm going to replace the existing output, so it's only gonna take a second to build. And then we will head over to the machine learning side where we can see the content and take action. Okay, so pops up a window, sure enough, here we are. Now, again, we have the Jupyter Notebook for the basics, and that is the only thing that really uses um, a, a Python notebook anymore. The actual uh, learning is happening with this learn.py, which is an all-new command, and so there are a lot of um, you know uh, differences in it. Because it's not visual, you need to either have things set up ahead of time or send them in via the command line parameter. Um, as before, I have a little, I like monitoring my progress with TensorBoard and I just write a little script. Uh, this is a little batch file and I'll be sure to put it in the, in the show notes. And so you can see that, you know, I'm just starting up TensorBoard. There's nothing super crazy going on here. So I'm just gonna click that and it just starts TensorBoard and then opens up a browser window. And you can see that I, it took me a few runs to get everything working smoothly here. And we'll use ten, TensorBoard to monitor things. The other thing you're gonna notice, instead of the hyperparameters file that we're used to, there's this trainerconfig.yaml file. Now this is, YAML is yet another markup language and it's a very lightweight 
uh, markup language. So the thing here is, again, you'll see that there's a bunch of brains in here, banana brain, push block brain. These are all of the brains for the different models that they have for many of their examples, right? This is the default. Here are all of your default parameters. And then for our generic brain, these are the things that we've overridden of the defaults, right? So again, we know this is a very simple scenario. We want it to drain really, really fast. You know, so max 50,000 steps. You know, the, the beta load is lower. The number of epochs, I think, is a little higher. Buffer size is a little different. Um, the number of hidden units is a lot smaller. You know, so there's a number of things here that we kind of toned down to just make this problem, because it's so simple, just kind of train faster and, and go and be done. So notice here, though, it says generic brain. That is the name of the game object that held the brain script. So that's important. That's how it knows which of these override segments to use. So you're going to want to have your uh, trainer config.yaml set up, and you're going to make double check, especially if you're having any problems, double check that the names are consistent between the two. I don't know if capitalization is important, but um, you should probably just check that just to be pedantic and make sure. Now, to get started, we need to open up a command window. So um, what you can do is just hit start and type in CMD, and that will start up a command window. Um, mine turns out to be, because I have MeshLab on here, um, I think that's the, the shortcut that comes with it. Uh, the other thing that you can do is if you do control shift right click you should get an option to either open powershell or command window depending on your particular system configuration if you're in windows so you can just click that and if it's powershell you just type in cmd to go to your command line so now you can do a dir and you can type in learn.py now Again, this is assuming that you've updated all of your libraries and anything, and it'll say, hey, here's you know the options, and you can also do learn.py dash help, dash dash help, tech tech help, and it'll give you some options. I have found that uh, we don't need to do a whole lot. Let me open up my show notes here real quick, and we can see in here I am going to copy and paste this one. So uh, learn.py, simplest scenario, that is the name of my executable. So simplest scenario is that one, uh, as opposed to the multi, which is the one that I've most recently updated. And then run ID, so this is in TensorFlow, going to be the name that shows up over here, and each one gets its own folder. So I highly recommend that you change that every time that you run it. Um, you give it a new pass number or run number so that you can keep track of them separately because they don't take up that much space. Uh, tech tech train, that means, hey, actually train the model as opposed to just executing it. And then the save frequency is save every 5,000 steps. And we said a total of 50,000 steps, so it's going to save 10 times. One of the other things that I like about this, as opposed to the IPI notebook, um, and you can see it kicking off here, and TensorBoard should update in a little bit. Oh, and then we crashed. Uh, let's see here. Had an issue creating TensorBoard. Oh, warning, Unity agents, no external brains found in Unity environment. Well, that's no good. And if you see this no variables to save or this no external brains, means that you did somewhere along the line, like I probably did, screw it up and didn't have an external brain set up. I thought I did. Oh, no, nope, but there it is. I was still set as player. For some reason, it didn't stick. And so I'm going to hit build again. Happy accident. Bob Ross would be thrilled. And it is nice because you're not clicking through a zillion things uh, to go ahead and run it again. And it does, if you have issues, I found that it does restart better uh, whereas some of the previous versions, I ended up having to restart my whole computer. In this case, it seems to be a little more graceful about it. Okay, so we're going to try this again. Learn.py, simplest scenario, run ID, basics, one, pass six, train with a C frequency of 5,000. So hit enter. 
All right, and then an itty bitty little window has popped up for Unity, and you're going to be able to see it because it's uh, off of my main monitor. But you'll see it'll show you here are your parameters, and then it will provide you the output status here in text. And again, what's nice about this is on the iPy notebook, if you did a very, very, very long run, it would start doing funky things to the web page, and this doesn't have that problem. As you can see, we've already at 6,000 steps, 7,000 steps already started collecting a real reward, and we'll open up TensorBoard again. Go ahead and refresh that. And so there's basics one past six, and you can see here we are. We are already off to the races with training. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off smoothing so we can see what's really going on. And we're pretty happy with that, right? And it's at 9,000 steps here. And again, we got a whole 50,000 steps. So not bad. We haven't had many issues once this gets going. Um, you know, notice that I have Unity running in the background. Previous versions of this, I've made sure to turn off Unity in the background, but I haven't had, again, nearly the same number of problems with that. So I think overall, the implementation that's going on here is a little better. Um, if you are having problems training your game, if for some reason you keep hitting train and it doesn't work, you know, one is to look out um, for that, you know, uh, in, in player brain or internal brain versus external brain. Um, and that was actually something that I was going to, in the show notes, say, hey, be on the lookout for this. But I did a lot. So, of course, um, you know, there it is. And at the same time, you know, if you do have problems where, you know, the scores are zero or it doesn't seem to be converging, go back, make sure you're able to play your game. Um, you know, check your console when you're playing your game as yourself. Make sure that you don't have any errors popping up, any kind of warnings popping up. Um, because I, ha I did have a couple of cases when I was porting this code, I did have some errors that uh, were at runtime, not compile time that were preventing me from training correctly. Okay, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, so that is really the vast majority of my notes on doing a training. So what we're gonna do here, okay, so we're at 43,000, so we're almost done training. We've been trained up pretty much since step 12,000. Um, but again, try to go through every little thing. Make sure that you see end to end how does the training work in the new platform. So give it 2,000 more steps. And then it'll say that it's saving. There we go, saved model, step 50,000, export, and then froze 12 variables and turned them into constant knobs. All right, so here, this is our folder where we were and we have our models, and then you can see basics one past six. And in here, you'll see, there we go. Simple scenario, basics one past six dot bytes file. So that is your output from uh, TensorFlow. So we're going to go ahead and close that, and then we have this. And so that's the one we just created. We're gonna drag and drop that in. Gonna go back to our academy, go back to our brain, and we're gonna change that from external to internal because we've already done all of the stuff to turn on. TensorFlow Sharp is the same between point two and point three. And then we're gonna make sure, yep, that's the correct pass. We're gonna bring that file over here and hopefully when we run it, it will behave in a manner, yes, that we would expect. So here we are and every 250 steps, the game will reset you'll get new white block and it will seek out the red target. And again, you'll notice when it gets there, it's really noisy. And part of the reason why that it's noisy is because it can't differentiate uh, with the reward that we've given it, um, whether it's a little bit above or a little bit below, it's all the same to the uh, machine learning algorithm. It's always receiving the same reward. And so anytime you end up with a series of cases where it expects an identical reward. It's just kind of kind of randomly bounce around in there. So <clears throat> if 
you know, if this kind of behavior bothers you, then uh, refining your reward mechanism may uh, result in a more stable behavior. And we've seen that um, with some of the continuous reward stuff that we've done in other videos. So right now, this is exactly what we expected. It trained up super fast. We're able to see everything. Pull up the tensor board, right? Uh, resize that. Looks beautiful. That's exactly what we want. So we are up and running uh, with training in 0 0.3. If you have any questions, as usual, feel free to drop them in the comments and I will do my best to respond to every one of them. Thank you very much and have a good one.